Let's do Kubo and the Two Strings, which is the new uh, movie from uh, Leica Studios, who've given us Coraline, Paranormal, Box Trolls, people who've sort of uh, developed stop-motion animation in the 21st century rather magnificently, I think. And what their films have always combined in the past is uh, beautiful storytelling, you know, complex storytelling, often kind of challenging material, and really visually rich, sumptuous animation, the kind of animation that feels tactile, feels like you can, you know, you can, it's got, heft it's got weave it's got tactility to it so that tradition continues in this um kubo and the two strings it's a story about a young japanese boy who has this gift for spinning tales and for telling stories we see him very early on he, he strums a, a chord and he starts telling stories and he has pieces of paper that are like origami and as he tells the story the stories come to life in this origami format the characters appear before him and during the course of his storytelling, he manages to conjure up a vengeful spirit. And we then begin this long journey, um, which is a, a voyage of discovery, in which he teams up with Monkey, who is voiced by uh, Charlize Theron, and Beetle, uh, voiced by Matthew McConaughey, and embarks on this quest which aims to unravel the mystery of his fractured family. Here's a clip. Kubo, look. Sword unbreakable. It could be a trap. Mm. Allow me. What? It's not a trap if you do it? Stealth is my middle name. You don't even have a first name. Don't worry, I got this. <laughs> the mighty beetle is victorious! So the film is rated a PG for uh, mild fancy violence and scary scenes. And as is always the case with sort of genuinely uh, inventive animation, when there are moments which are meant to be scary, I think they are properly scary. Um, it's a uh, it's a PG, but it is it does have moments that are you know genuinely sort of you know, properly alarming in a way that I think they're absolutely meant to be. I loved this. I thought that the visuals were really mesmerizing and enchanting i loved the fact that the story was stories within stories narratives within narratives and it wasn't afraid to be adventurous it didn't feel the need to constantly have to restate its purpose and signpost it kind of imagined that its audience was smart enough intelligent enough open-minded enough to keep up um it also had that sort of classic thing which is that when animation is done really well as i think it is here you get that sense of universality that it is actually available to all audiences. I mean, we've had an interesting case in which, you know, Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, pardon me, which, you know, plays to a young audience, but also satisfies uh, uh, parents. We, I mean, I liked it very much. And then Long Come Sausage Party, which is an adult animation. Then you get this. And as is the case with so many of Leica's films, I do feel that this is the sort of thing that anybody can join in exactly the same way as uh, the Miyazaki's or, you know, the stuff from Studio Ghibli. These are films which have genuinely universal appeal. And, whether or not what you're going there for is, as I said, this complex intertwining narrative, the lovely use of music, the way in which it straddles this divide between tales that are told and tales that are playing out before you, the way in which it visualises the idea of an imaginative reality coming to life. The fact that it's, w sorry for banging the table, the fact that it's willing to take risks and that it doesn't feel that it, have to, it has to play everything safe, I thought was really rewarding. And as I said, there is a, as we get towards the sort of the final climactic confrontation, not only is it moving, but there are bits in it that are properly scary as they're meant to be. And things in it that are genuinely joyous. I really, really liked it. And I, I hope loads of people go and see it. And does it essentially revolve around static images placed next to each other and then run together playing them quickly to give an illusion yeah they are they are still images placed next to each other really? to give the illusion of movement yes i think we should call it cinema